In just 24 hours, $127 billion vanished from NVIDIA's market value. The reason? A Chinese company just announced something that was supposed to be impossible. While Western experts confidently predicted it would take China at least 15 years to develop their own extreme ultraviolet lithography technology, Huawei and a team of Chinese researchers just proved them catastrophically wrong. This isn't just another tech headline. This is the moment the entire global semiconductor industry realizes the rules have fundamentally changed forever. For decades, one company held absolute power over the world's most critical technology. ASML, a Dutch giant, was the only manufacturer capable of producing EUV lithography machines. These aren't ordinary pieces of equipment. Each machine costs between $150 million and $200 million, requires 40 shipping containers just to transport, and represents the pinnacle of human engineering achievement. These machines use extreme ultraviolet light to etch circuits just 3 nanometers wide onto silicon wafers, about 30,000 times thinner than a human hair. Without these machines, you cannot manufacture the advanced chips that power everything from iPhones to military supercomputers to artificial intelligence systems. SML had a complete monopoly, and China was their biggest customer, accounting for over 40% of their global sales worth billions annually. Then came the sanctions. In 2019, the United States pressured the Netherlands to ban advanced EUV sales to China. By October 2022, sweeping export controls aimed to cut off China's access to cutting-edge semiconductor technology completely. In September 2023, even stricter limitations followed. The American strategy was simple. Control the lithography equipment and you control who can manufacture advanced chips. Cut off China's access and freeze their technological development. Washington believed this would maintain America's chokehold on the most important technology of the 21st century. They were wrong. Deep within the Chinese Academy of Sciences Shanghai Institute of Optics and Fine Mechanics, a team led by Dr. Lin Nan was working on something revolutionary. They successfully developed an extreme ultraviolet light source platform operating at internationally competitive parameters. But here's what makes this truly remarkable. Huawei didn't just copy ASML's approach. They invented a completely different method called laser-induced discharge plasma. While ASML uses laser-produced plasma, Huawei's system vaporizes tin between electrodes, hits it with high voltage, and creates plasma that emits the precise 13.5 nanometer wavelength of EUV light needed for chip manufacturing. Industry insiders are now saying what nobody wanted to admit. China might have actually found a better way to do it. The breakthrough came alongside another devastating blow to Western semiconductor dominance. Huawei announced their Ascend 910C AI chip, a processor that achieves performance comparable to NVIDIA's flagship H100 by combining two of their previous 910B processors into a single package through advanced integration techniques. This doubles the computing power and memory capacity while using China's domestic 7 nanometer manufacturing process. Senior analyst Li Wei from China Renaissance called it a game changer. The market agreed. NVIDIA lost $127 billion in market value in a single day when the news broke. But the production challenges are real. Huawei's manufacturing partner Smike is producing chips using their 7 nanometer process, but yields are only around 20%, far below the 70% typically required for commercial viability. This means for every 10 chips attempted, only two meet quality standards. Despite this, Huawei has already begun distributing samples and accepting orders with plans to ramp up production to 100,000 units within the year. This reflects their determination to solidify their position and reduce China's reliance on foreign technology regardless of the obstacles. The financial commitment behind this push is staggering. In 2024 alone, Huawei poured 179.7 billion yuan, approximately $25 billion, into research and development. That's more than 25% of their entire revenue, surpassing even tech giants like Apple and Samsung in R&D spending. This money funded the development of Harmony OS, their complete independent operating system, the Kirin 9000's processor made entirely with domestic technology, and their entire Ascend AI chip series. The company reported revenues of around $118 billion in 2024, marking a 22% year-over-year increase. They're not just surviving the sanctions, they're thriving because of them. Meanwhile, American sanctions created an unexpected catastrophe for U.S. companies. A critical flaw in the implementation timing allowed Chinese firms to legally purchase $38 billion worth of supposedly banned semiconductor equipment in just one year. While the U.S. rushed to implement strict export controls, crucial allies Japan and the Netherlands took their time creating matching regulations. 
This year-long gap created a perfectly legal pathway for Chinese companies to shift their massive orders from U.S. suppliers to Dutch and Japanese competitors. Applied Materials and LAM Research watched their Chinese revenue streams evaporate overnight, with collective losses approaching $1 billion, while ASML and Tokyo Electron captured nearly 40% of revenue from top-chip equipment manufacturers during this period. China has now responded with their own technological weapon. Starting November 2025, sweeping new controls over rare earth minerals took effect. Any company worldwide using Chinese rare earths to produce semiconductors at 14 nanometers or smaller now needs explicit permission from Beijing. This affects industry giants like TSMC, ASML, Intel, and NVIDIA directly. China produces 353 kilotons of rare earth elements annually and controls the entire supply chain from mining to processing to manufacturing. These five critical elements, holmium, erbium, thulium, europium, and ytterbium, are essential for modern chip production, and the policy applies to any product containing even 0.1% Chinese rare earth content. ASML now faces an existential crisis. The company expects China to account for around 20% of projected sales in 2025, down from 40% previously, and the trajectory points further downward. If China successfully scales domestic EUV production within the next two to three years, ASML permanently loses access to the world's largest semiconductor market. CEO Christophe Fouquet has openly voiced concerns about mounting pressure from the United States and anticipates further restrictions ahead. The Dutch giant finds itself caught between American political demands and business survival in an industry where China represents nearly half their historical revenue base. The monopoly that seemed untouchable just five years ago is crumbling, and the company that held absolute power over semiconductor manufacturing is watching a new competitor emerge from what was supposed to be an impossible situation. The semiconductor industry just witnessed something nobody thought was possible. Huawei has begun testing homegrown extreme ultraviolet lithography equipment at their Dunguan facility, targeting 3 nanometer chip production. Before you dismiss this as another exaggerated tech headline, Understand that multiple credible sources, including the Harbin Institute of Technology, have confirmed achieving the critical 13.5 nanometer wavelength needed for EUV lithography. This isn't speculation anymore. China has cracked one of the most important pieces of the EUV puzzle, and the implications are staggering. Let's cut through the noise and focus on what's actually happening. Back in 2019, the U.S. government slammed Huawei with devastating sanctions, cutting them off from American chip technology. YesML, the Dutch company that holds a complete monopoly on EUV machines, was pressured to stop all shipments to China. These machines cost over $350 million each and represent two decades of development involving thousands of the world's most precise component. Without EUV technology, Producing chips smaller than 7 nanometers becomes nearly impossible using conventional methods. Industry experts confidently predicted China would need 10 to 15 years to catch up, if they could catch up at all. The ESML CEO himself stated in December 2024 that China remained at least a decade behind without access to EUV equipment. That assessment is aging badly. Chinese researchers took a completely different approach called Laser-Induced Discharge Plasma, or LDP. Instead of using high-powered lasers to blast tin droplets into plasma like ESML does, the LDP method vaporizes tin between electrodes and hits it with a massive electrical discharge. This creates the exact same 13.5 nanometer wavelength light required for etching 3 nanometer circuits onto silicon wafers. The Harbin Institute of Technology successfully demonstrated this technology, achieving what Western analysts considered years away. Patents filed in 2023 by Chinese lithography companies are now materializing into actual hardware being tested at Huawei's facilities. But here's where we need to separate achievement from commercial reality. Generating the right wavelength of light is absolutely critical, but it's just one component of an extraordinarily complex system. A full EUV lithography machine contains over 100,000 precision-engineered parts. You need ultra-precise mirrors that can reflect EUV light without absorbing it, sophisticated optic systems, advanced software for pattern alignment, 
and an entire supply chain of specialized components that took YesML and its partners 20 years to perfect. China has proven they can create the light source. What they haven't proven yet is whether they can integrate all these systems into a machine that works reliably at commercial scale. The current situation with Huawei and their manufacturing partner, SMIC, tells us everything about where China actually stands. They're not using homegrown EUV machines right now because those machines don't exist in production form yet. Instead, they've achieved something almost as impressive through sheer engineering determination. Using older DUV technology and a technique called self-aligned quadruple patterning, they're creating chips that approach 5 nanometer performance. The Mate 60 Pro smartphone released in 2023 shocked Western analysts because it contained a 7 nanometer chip that wasn't supposed to be possible under sanctions. But there's a massive catch. Yield rates on these advanced DUV-made chips hover around 20%, meaning 80% of the chips produced are defective and must be discarded. Commercial chip production typically requires yields above 70% to be economically viable. At 20% yields, these chips cost three to four times what they should, making them unsustainable for mass market product. This is why the EUV development matters so much. If China can successfully build working EUV systems, they bypass the yield problem entirely. A 3 nanometer chip made with proper EUV equipment could achieve 80 or 90 percent yields from day one, making them commercially viable and competitive with anything TSMC or Samsung produces. That's the prize China is chasing, and they're throwing unprecedented resources at it. Chinese government investment in indigenous EUV development has reached between 37 and 40 billion dollars. For context, ESML's total market capitalization is around $300 billion, built over decades. China is attempting to recreate that capability in a fraction of the time through concentrated state investment. Reports indicate trial production of EUV equipment is targeted for the third quarter of 2025, with hopes for mass production capability by 2026. Let's be brutally honest about these timelines. They're extremely aggressive, bordering on unrealistic. Even if Chinese engineers successfully integrate all the necessary components into a working prototype, moving from prototype to mass production involves solving thousands of manufacturing challenges. Software needs debugging, components need reliability testing, yields need optimization, and supply chains need establishment. YesML didn't achieve commercial success overnight and neither will China. A more realistic timeline puts limited production capability in 2027 or 2028, with genuine commercial viability possibly arriving in the early 2030s. But here's what matters more than the exact timeline. China has demonstrated they're not just trying to copy ASML's approach. They're innovating with alternative technologies that could potentially be simpler and cheaper if they work at scale. The geopolitical implications extend far beyond chip manufacturing. YesML derives over 40% of its revenue from Chinese customers, making China their single largest market. The company has already warned investors to expect significant revenue decline in 2026 as Chinese firms reduce dependence on foreign equipment. If China succeeds in building domestic EUV capability, YesML doesn't just lose market share, they potentially face competition in global markets from cheaper Chinese alternatives. That's a complete reversal of the current power dynamic where ASML operates as an unchallenged monopoly. Meanwhile, Huawei continues advancing on multiple fronts simultaneously. Their Ascend 910C AI chip reportedly matches NVIDIA's H100 performance by integrating two previous generation processors into a single package. It's not the most elegant solution, but it works. Huawei is also developing high bandwidth memory internally, eliminating dependence on South Korean suppliers. They're building an entire ecosystem of semiconductor capabilities from the ground up, and while none of it matches the absolute cutting edge yet, the gap narrows monthly. 
the American sanctions strategy assumed technological complexity would act as an impenetrable barrier. That assumption is being tested in real time. Rather than crippling China's chip industry permanently, export controls have functioned more like a forced innovation accelerator. Chinese companies that might have remained content purchasing from Western suppliers now have no choice but to develop alternative. State funding that might have been distributed across various priorities is now laser-focused on semiconductor independence. Thousands of China's brightest engineers who might have worked in other fields are now dedicated to solving lithography challenges. This creates a paradox. The sanctions are working in the sense that China still cannot access ASML's machines and remains years behind in some capabilities. But they're also failing because instead of maintaining permanent American advantage, they've triggered a technological arms race that China